Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Robin. I'm a filmmaker and photographer based on Vancouver Island, British Columbia. And today I want to share five apps I use daily to enhance my film photography workflow. Let's check it out. Although for some the idea of shooting film is to step away from our ultra-connected device, it doesn't mean that we cannot use this device to enhance our film workflow. From scouting to shooting and even developing, here's a 5 app to help you with your film photography workflow. A small note here, I am an iPhone user, so all of those apps I'll talk about are available on the App Store, but I know some of those developers also have a version for Android. And for those that don't, I know there are similar apps that do the same thing. Let's start with photo pills. It's basically the Swiss army knife of planning shoots. It has tons of data to help you successfully plan and get your bucket shot. This app can help you calculate your exposure, your depth of field, but also how to make star trail and get the Milky Way. So although it is a bit more centered toward astrophotographers and digital photographers, there are a couple of features you can use for your film photography workflow. For example, one of the main features of this app is this augmented reality tool that in any given locations, it allows you to know where the sun will be at any given time. Let's say you are scouting a location for a later shoot, and you would like to know where the sun will be at any given time. By simply opening the app and using this AR feature, you can f point your phone at the sky and know where the sun is and will be. And let's say you want the sun to be between two hills or two trees or two towers, or whatever you want, basically. Even if you want your subject to be backlit, you'll know exactly when the sun will be in its optimum location so you can get that bucket shot. This augmented reality feature is really helpful but it only works the location you currently are in. If you are planning a location that you cannot get in advance to, you can still use photo pills to get an idea of where the sun will be and the moon and the Milky Way. You simply move the pin on the map anywhere in the world. Photo pills also give you the basic information of like when the twilight will happen, golden hours, sunrise, sunset, and which state the moon is currently in. I've been using photo pill for several years now and I really enjoy this app. And although it's a bit costly at $10.99, I think it's worth it, let alone just for the AR features. Because again, when you're on location and you can see exactly where the sun will be, to me, even just that feature costs the price of the app. And photo pills is available on the App Store, but also on the Android Store. The next app on our list is called Lux and it's a smartphone light meter. You might wonder why to have a light meter on your phone, especially if most SLR these days came with their inboard light meters. Well, I use Lux for a very specific reason. It's when I'm loading my Nikon F3s. When you load your film in the Nikons, whether it's the F3, the FM2, FM3, the light meter won't work until you reach one on your exposure roll. This is actually a feature on most Nikons to avoid people to start shooting right away after loading the film, because that first portion might be already exposed to light. That being said, sometimes you can really tightly load the film, and I like to be able to shoot as soon as possible, and even if I sometimes have to double it, it would be nice if the light meter would start right away. For smartphone light meters, it's actually pretty accurate, and most of the time I've used it, the exposure was correct on my film. That being said, if you have one of those SLR without a light meter, I would highly suggest to get a dedicated light meter instead of only using your phone, because the phone is good, but it won't be as accurate as a dedicated light meter. There are plenty of apps that give you the same feature of light metering on your phone. I use Lux, and unfortunately it's not available anymore on the App Store. My guess is that the developer removed it. That being said, I also use Pocket Light Meter, which is still available, and all of those apps have the same feature. So you basically set your ISO, your aperture, and you have your shutter, or you set your ISO, your shutter, and you have your aperture. So they're pretty straightforward, and they all have the same ID behind them. Staying on the shooting side of things, the next app is called Film Reciprocity by Guillaume Moigneux. If you are shooting long exposure on film, then you must already know about the film reciprocity failure. If you don't know about film reciprocity, there is a very well written article on shootitwithfilm.com that I linked in the description below, and you can learn about film reciprocity. But in short, it's the idea that when the film is exposed too long to light, the reciprocity fails, and you need to compensate for that failure. Most film manufacturers will provide you with a formula to counteract these reciprocity failures. However, you need to do the calculation yourself, and it can be cumbersome, and if you don't like math like myself, it's a pain. But fortunately, there is an app for that. And that's where the Film Reciprocity app enters the game. 
It has a list of the most used film, and you simply enter as you shutter speed, and then it will calculate for you the actual shutter speed needed to counteract for the film reciprocity failure. So I will just launch the app to give you an example. So as you can see, it's a very simple uh, layout. We're going to select a film. Um, let's choose my favorite, Ailford HP5. Now, let's say you are photographing a waterfall and you want that smooth water. Um, the camera is letting you know that the, the correct exposure is 4 seconds. So you're going to type 4 seconds, and then the app will give you the corrected time taking in consideration the film reciprocity failure. So in this case, the correct exposure would be 6 second 1. So you would go into build mode, and instead of like getting the shutter for like 4 seconds, you actually the shutter will be open longer for adding more lights, and here it will be 6.1 seconds. So it's a very simple app to use, and they do have a decent collection of uh, film stock you can use, uh, from Cinesteel, Kodak, Ilford, and uh, Fuji. And this specific app is a bit difficult to get. I believe I got it from GetUp, or maybe the French App Store. However, even if you're on Android, there are plenty of other apps, and I know for a fact that it will give you roughly uh, the same list of film and the correct measure for the film reciprocity failure. The next app on our list is called Massive Dev Charts. If, like me, you are developing your black and white film at home, then this is a must-app app because it is basically an assistant while you are developing with a real-time timers depending on which chemical you use and which film you are developing. So I'll just launch the app to kind of give you a live example. Um, let's see. So first of all, when you open the app, uh, the great thing is that it just uses my times, which is basically you, the favorite uh, film you've been developing in the past. So you can quickly access it from the from the main menu. But uh, let's start from scratch. Um, here you have all of the list of black and white films. There is tons of them. I'll choose one of my favorite. Like I said, we're gonna go with HP5. Next thing you need to choose what type of developer you are using. Uh, in my case, I often use the Ilfotech DDX, and there are several versions of the DDX. You can get it in powder or in liquid, the uh, OnePlus 4 or the OnePlus 9. I usually use the OnePlus 4, so I'm going to select this one. Next, going to tell you uh, if you shot your film at box speed, if you pulled it, if you pushed it. And that's one of the great advantages of this app is that you already have like all of the push formats. So if you push one stop to EA800, a two stop to EA116, so you can have all of those time here. So I'll choose just a normal uh, uh, box speed at 400 ISO. And here you are basically ready to go. Um, it tells you uh, uh, this is the HP5 uh, with Ilfotech. It tells you that it's uh, 7 minutes at 24 degrees. Um, and I believe you can actually modify this exactly. You can actually modify uh, if um, you are shooting a if you have a bigger Patterson tank that allows two or four rolls sometimes, you can change the volume in millimeters. For instance, uh, I'm going to go with a 600 here for like two rolls of 35 millimeters. The dilution is 1 plus 4, and it gives you the final mix as well. And finally, yeah, it's going to be 7 minutes at 24 degrees. And you have different uh, settings here. So let's say you are walking in a dark room and you don't want the bright screen of the phone. Well, you can switch to uh, ambient lighting, for example. Um, that being said, I wouldn't use that in uh, when like removing the film from the from the films from the rolls because you might ex this is enough light to ruin your film or to fog your film. So that's only to be used once the film is already into the developing tank. And finally, we're gonna start here. And there we are. We just started. So it tells you that we need to like rotate the film tank currently for about seven minutes. Uh, and uh, we won't go through the full thing, but you get the, you get the idea. For seven minutes, you're gonna have to rotate and let it rest. And moving on, it's gonna move to the stop bath, then to the fixing, to the hypo clear, and finally the final wash. Let's stop it right there. So this gives you a rough idea of what you can do with the massive dev charts. Uh, it's only available for black and white, and then the developer has a different app. Maybe a more updated app if you also wish to develop C41 and E6 at home. I currently only develop black and white, so I stuck to this app. The Massive Dev Chart is available on the App Store, the Amazon Store, and the Google Store for $8.99. And I cannot stress how good this app is. And if you like me developing black and white film at home, you should definitely get it. And finally, we have our fifth app that's called Series. 
So now that you've shot your film, developed it, maybe got the scan back from the lab, you may want to share your best images on social medias. And despite the fact that most photographers these days do not like Instagram, it is still the main app to share photography. The thing about Instagram though is that although you can upload vertical content, images are usually cropped at a 5x7 or 4x5. And when you shoot 35mm film, it is a 3x2 ratio, so by simply Opening the app in Instagram, this will crop your images and maybe you spend quite a bit of time on the compositions for a 3x2 ratio. And this is where Series comes into play because it's one of those numerous apps that allow you to put a white canvas around your images. And I really like this app because it's very simple to use and you can change a canvas, let's say if you would like to upload a vertical images, an horizontal image, or even a square images with different ratio, you can do so with the app. And on top of that, you can add borders to your images. I like to add a very thin black borders around my 35 mil, so it kind of make a nice contrast between the images and the white canvas. This app is free to download and there is a subscription for most of the advanced feature. If you're using the app daily, you may want some of those extra features. That being said, you can just stick to the free plan if you just wish to add white borders around your images. And that's five apps I use daily to enhance my film photography workflow, but don't leave yet because there is a bonus app and it's called Granary. Greenery was made by Cal Johnson. He's a photographer that got tired of Instagram by pushing away photographers and making people concentrate more on reels and videos. So he basically made his own Instagram for film photographers, but without reels, without algorithm, just film photos. It got released in the spring of 2022 and got features on websites such as F-Stoppers and Petapixel. That's roughly when I made my account, which allows you to upload up to 25 images. And after that, you need to get a subscription to upload more images and to be able to unlock more features to personalize your, uh, your profile and such. The thing about Granary though is that it's been kind of quiet lately. I know that the developers, I think, has still a full time, so he's developing this app on his free time. So that's probably why we don't see much uh, updates on the app lately, but it's definitely an app to watch for if, like myself, you want to connect with uh, film photographers and you would like to have a platform uh, solely dedicated for film photography. And when you're uploading images on Granary, you actually have to tell us which camera you use, the lens, the film stock, if you pushed or pulled the images, alongside a description and the locations and some uh, simple hashtags so that the photo can be shared and seen by other people. And the great thing is you can actually search images shot on a specific film stock. For example, you want to try a new film stock, you don't really know what it looks like, you can just type it in in the search bar and you'll get a, a collection of images shot, for example, on Kodak Gold 200, so you'll know how it's supposed to look and then you can decide whether or not you want to try it out. The other thing to note is that there isn't currently a app for everyone, it's in beta productions and the developer is slowly rolling it out for uh, specific users, most of the people that use these subscriptions. And for other people, you need to use the web app, so you can just leave a small icon on your phone, or you can even upload and see the Granary website onto an iPad or a, a computer, for example. I'm sure we'll see extra features and the actual app rolling over the upcoming months. So this is definitely an app to watch for. All right, there you have it, guys. Five apps, actually six apps to enhance your film photography workflow. So thank you for watching. And if you got something out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing so I can do more of those videos in the future. See you next time.